What's up, guys? So I wanted to talk about the controversy regarding the iPhone and its potential to actually harm you in a way that you may not be familiar with. There was an article that was recently released that talks about the iPhone's MagSafe technology, in particular the iPhone 12's MagSafe technology, and its ability to augment and alter the function of various implantable medical devices. In particular, it talks about how the MagSafe technology in an iPhone 12 can affect implantable pacemakers and defibrillators. And what it does is that it actually causes alteration of the function of these implantable medical devices, and these medical devices are there to potentially save your life. Now, what is MagSafe technology? MagSafe te technology essentially is something I think that Apple introduced back with the MacBook Pro uh, many years ago. And we have magnets that are in various different mobile phones. And actually, the iPhone has had magnets in multiple models, previous models. So uh, Apple has issued a warning, um, I think dating back to the iPhone 6, that says that if you have an implantable medical device, to just be cautious and keep the cell phone actually away from this uh, implantable device. But what this technology does is basically uses like electromagnetic radiation and uh, like an IR sensor as well to basically connect devices very tightly to the back of the phone and align different inputs, I guess you could say, uh, in a very ideal manner. And what that does is actually leads to more efficient and faster charging. Not to mention that Apple has also released a whole bunch of MagSafe accessories that can connect to the back of the iPhone. And honestly, the direction that mobile technology is going is that don't be surprised if soon there's going to be an iPhone as well as other devices that won't have any ports to them. Apple already got rid of the headphone jack, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And soon they're probably going to get rid of the USB type C as well. And we will have phones that have literally no ports. Everything is going to be through MagSafe and magnetic technology because honestly, it's a good technology. It's more efficient and it does, it charges your devices faster. Connectivity is better. So this is, this is the direction where mobile technology is going. So what does this article show? This article shows that when someone placed an iPhone 12 over these implantable devices, it actually caused them to stop working or in some, in some situations work differently. So what are these implantable devices and what exactly do they do? What exactly does a pacemaker and an AICD do? Um, so a pacemaker is actually a device that goes underneath the skin that has leads that connect to your heart. And what the pacemaker does is that it augments the electrical activity of your heart. So what that means is that if your heartbeat, let's say, is very slow or very fast or irregular, this sends out signal while it, it receives signal from your heart that while your heart is beating, and then it sends out signal to augment your heart's natural signal in order to get you in a normal sinus rhythm, which means that in a regular uh, physiologic healthy rhythm. An AICD is a little bit different than that, and an AICD actually has two functions to it. An AICD can function as a pacemaker as well, but the other thing that an AICD does is that it's able to deliver a life-saving shock to the heart. So that little device that you have actually delivers a shock and shocks your heart when your heart goes into a rhythm which is not going to be compatible with life. So you might be familiar with this when you've seen movies and TV shows and you see doctors walking around with these pads and when someone gets really sick or someone goes into cardiac arrest, you know, you see doctors shocking them back to life and um, you probably, you know, think that doctors carry these things in their back pocket and just go around shocking patients back to life. But most cardiac arrest happens when you have a rhythm that is abnormal or is very weak. And so the heart is not beating appropriately. It's not able to generate enough force to push blood to perfuse various organs. And obviously if your organs don't have oxygenated blood going to them, then they're going to fail and your organs are going to die. And most people go into rhythms that present that way. And those, don't, you don't shock. You don't fix that by shocking. If you shock somebody who's in a non-shockable rhythm, actually you're going to make things worse. So. Most patients you treat with medications, but then there's plenty of times when patients go into these lethal rhythms that require 
shocks, and we deliver shocks to try to help save patients' lives. Now, sometimes you might not want someone's implantable device to shock them, and it's not always an option that you, have, you can remove the device. Let's say somebody is terminal and they want to go into hospice, and now they want to be comfortable and spend time with their family. They necessarily don't want their device to be firing and causing shocks because these shocks are painful and uncomfortable. Other times, you know, because it's a man-made technology, sometimes things go bad. I've seen many patients that have come in to the emergency department because their AICD device is firing too frequently and it's just firing nonstop. And then when you interrogate it or you check to see if it's doing it appropriately, you find out that no, the AICD device is firing when the rhythm is not appropriate to fire. So in those situations, you also have to augment the device. And it's not necessary for you to always have to then, you know, remove the device and go through an invasive procedure. So when in situations like that, what happens? Doctors carry a magnet. It's a, it's a round magnet on the code carts, the crash carts that are on the floors. These magnets are sometimes attached to that. Cardiology fellows and cardiac doctors usually carry these magnets on them. And in situations like what I mentioned about the gentleman who came in who had his device firing, uh, firing too, too frequently, you can place a magnet over the device and that will actually disable the shock function. And the manufacturers of these implantable devices actually put this function there to make it easier for doctors to help patients. So this is not something where the iPhone or other mobile devices are doing something that's you know, bizarre and you know, ruining these devices. They're basically um, working in a way that where the device was intended to work, but they're being used in a way that was not intended. So essentially, that surround magnet, which disables the AICD device and also can augment how a pacemaker functions. When you're placing a magnet on a certain pacemaker, the pacemaker defaults to a certain rate. Doctors set a proper rate for you know, how many beats they want you, you to have per minute. And when you place a magnet, it goes to like a default setting that is set by individual manufacturers. So both of these things are you know, not ideal if you're not doing them in a controlled setting. And they're definitely not good if you're unintentionally disabling your AICD or augmenting your pacemaker. And the iPhone 12 has the potential to do that. So the other iPhones, like I mentioned before, have magnets as well. And they have potential to also alter your devices. So you should keep all iPhones and all mobile phones, because most mobile phones nowadays have some sort of magnets built into them. Um, you should keep all these things away from your implantable medical devices. Now, the iPhone 12 actually ha happens to have a little bit more magnets than the other iPhones. So it has more of a chance to cause problems. I think Apple issued a warning, and the warning's been there for many years, actually, but I guess no one really paid attention to it, um, talking about how this has potential to affect these devices, keep the iPhone at least six inches away. Now I think they updated the setting to keep it at least 15 inches away. So at the end of the day, can the iPhone kill you? Yes, there's a potential that you know augmenting your AICD device and then you go into a lethal rhythm at that time when you have the iPhone there near your chest, that could potentially cause two major problems. And, you know, you might be thinking, how often do you keep it near your chest? I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of, you know, men in particular, elderly men who have shirts that have pockets over here. They'll just keep the iPhone in their front pocket. And these are usually the people that also might have these devices. So it, there's potential there. I think it's fair that the public should be aware of this. And this is something that Apple should be openly discussing. Now, what do I think is going to happen for the future? Now, to be honest, I really feel the way mobile technology is going. We're going to reach a state where every phone is going to be MagSafe technology. And most phones are not going to have any ports on them whatsoever. So I really think it's the job of the manufacturers of these implantable devices to start to you know, make some adjustments, make some changes, maybe the amount of electromagnetic radiation needed to enable those functions should be given, should, should, you, we should have them as doctors with those stronger magnets, but the magnets that are in iPhones should not be strong enough to be able to do it. So I think there needs to be some communication, maybe the engineers at, of, at these mobile technologies, or there needs to be some sort of like regulation because, you know, as the population is getting older, as our medical management is getting better, 
more and more implantable devices are being used and you see it that they're very common now actually so even AICDs are very common um, random quick tip for those who are in radiology or you know even if you're in the ICU and you're in internal medicine how do you tell the difference between a pacemaker and an AICD when looking at a chest x-ray that's a very very important thing sometimes patients come in they don't know what they have so if you do a chest x-ray if you have you'll see leads going to the heart because both of them work in the same way. They both augment how your heart works. But if you have, when you follow the lead, if there's an area of the lead that actually gets thicker than, than the other portions of the lead, that's the defibrillator por portion of, uh, of the AICD. So that's the part that actually shocks you. If you look at a pacemaker, the leads are both uniform. So if it's a dual lead pacemaker, of course, the leads are uniform and they're very thin. And if you have any portion that becomes a little thick, then you know that's the defibrillator portion and that's an AICD. And that honestly will come in very handy because you'll be shocked how many times people don't know what kind of devices they have. And it's very important for you to know, is, there, is, is it an AICD or is it a pacemaker? So that's one way you can easily tell is by doing a chest x-ray and figuring it out. Um, as a radiologist, you should also know that. So anyway, those are my quick thoughts about this controversy regarding the iPhone MagSafe technology and the potential for it to take your life. And I think, you know, this is knowledge that should be out there. And at the end of the day, you know, as long as you are empowered with the right kind of knowledge, then you can make informed decisions and be safe overall. So let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time.